What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Sonic the Hedgehog 2. One of my favorite stages right now. That being the Hilltop Zone. I love the music. I love the design. The way you're sort of above the clouds like that. Pretty neat. And uh, as mentioned last time, we are going to be finishing up Sonic 2 in this episode. I didn't want to do like an all the way through straight hour of commentating. That just doesn't sound that interesting to me or you, probably. So we split it up. And then, of course, next week I will be putting up a long play version. So all the way through with no commentary. The goal being, as I mentioned before, to try and get through pretty much every single Sonic game. It's an ambitious project, I know. Is it? I don't know, maybe. Well, now we're supersonic, so difficulty's over. If you didn't watch the last one, well, first of all, I don't know why you're watching this one, but uh, I mentioned that one of the downsides of Sonic 2 is that when you become able to be supersonic, there's no way to really stop it because you automatically transform as soon as you jump. They definitely figured it out better in uh, Sonic 3, where you had to press jump a second time. And you could argue even better in Mania, where you had to actually press a separate dedicated button. Because there were still some times in Sonic 3 where you might be forced into it. Anyways, Act 2. I don't know why I wanted that, actually, but, uh, well, now I have it. Ah, oh, Tails. Yeah, we're going to just wait for this guy, I think. It's funny, that enemy makes a return in so many Sonic games with, you know, slight variations. It's funny, too, what just generally what ideas make their way back into Sonic games, like, you know, the floor rising up from the top, which we obviously see again in Sandopolis. Not that it's like a supremely original idea, I suppose, but it's interesting. I don't consider it a, a like a negative. Let's uh, see if I can get those. There we go. I think I talked about it before with uh, like Robotnik or Eggman's boss battles. How there are certain things that like come back in different ways. Like uh, the boss in Wing Fortress Zone, for instance, which we got a little bit of ways before we get to. Makes a return in Flying Battery, kind of. It actually makes sense from a lore perspective. Not that the Sonic lore is that that deep or anything, but uh, notice there how I bounced back when he had one hit left, because otherwise you fall into the lava. Not that it matters as Super Sonic, but normally, if you're trying to do it hitless, that's how you would do it. Speaking of uh, great music, right? That little intro. So good. Oh, sorry, Dales. Oh, 
But anyways, supersonic time. Again. The other thing I always find funny in these uh, Sonic games is the sprites that they didn't bother to do a new sprite for, like that. So, like, normally when you're supersonic, right, your spines are a different shape. But certain sprites, they just didn't change. They just palette swapped them. It always looks kind of funny. Aha! Yeah. Secret area. Kind of. Not really. But anyways, it was something, right? It's cool that we had the option to do that, right? Like I said, one of the best things about these 2D Sonic games is just the, uh... All the different paths you can take. For example, you could fall down right there, but I don't want to do that. And that reminds me of Hydra City Zone, kinda. Yeah, it's funny. So, this particular level actually has one of the harder bosses in the game as well. Not necessarily in terms of just beating it, but if you're trying to go hitless, uh, it can mess you up. Not if you're supersonic, though. Kind of a common theme here. Uh, okay, that's fine, I guess. Uh, I wanted to do that, yeah. All right, we'll go with that. Alright, yeah, so just because of the spikes falling from the ceiling. Although, if we're supersonic, we literally just... do that, and... Yeah. Game over, man. Oh yeah, you can, you can do that. Don't worry, it doesn't softlock you there. It looked like it was going to for a minute, huh? That would have been sad. Like, oh, okay guys, we're restarting. You know, I was going to make a comment about how I like the music, but redundant, right? Definitely one of the best aspects of these games is just like the what's coming next aspect, you know? Uh, aspect. It's like you never really know what the next level is going to be unless you played the game a million times like I have. Shall we say there's just quite a bit of variety in terms of theme. And I quite like it. And I also just really like how this one, but really all the, the original Sonic games, they mix things up in terms of the mechanics and you get different little gimmicks and obstacles and that sort of thing. Also, we're going to do that, because why not? That's right, we're taking the supersonic-only path. Just because I wanted that extra life. <laughs> Certainly not a way I typically go. You can even, to a lesser extent, actually make your way along the bottom, believe it or not. Uh, you get to a certain point where it gets kind of hard, though. And then a certain point where it gets kind of impossible. But neat, nonetheless.
I would actually call this one of the more treacherous levels in terms of obstacles. There's just a lot of stuff that can hurt you. As is to be expected, I suppose. So you might need to be a little bit careful on your way through this one. Can I get up? Yes. Guess we're not getting that extra life. Tails is just glitching out a little bit there. Alright, and a pretty cool boss coming up. Look out. <laughs> I always thought this was cool when the laser, like, skims the platform. The reason I thought it was cool is because it is cool. See? That's cool. Oh, sorry Tails. Welcome to Metropolis Zone. Noteworthy for being the only stage in the game that has three acts. Now the reason for this is apparently, and someone will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure, apparently there was going to be another zone, which is the, uh, the fabled Genocide City. And that's why... Uh, this ended up having three. They cut Genocide City because, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> that would have gone over real well. Although, uh, I mentioned Sonic 2 Delta in the previous episode. It was actually included as a zone in that, which I plan to get back to at some point. Um, at some point, we'll leave it at that. Now, the worst thing about Metropolis Zone would have to be... This is kind of cool, huh? The worst thing would have to be those Praying Mantis enemies. They're, like, almost impossible to avoid. And they're placed in such a way that you typically don't see in Sonic games, where it's like, I was just running through the level, and then I got hit, because I was running forward. So I don't know what the deal is with those, but fortunately, you know, being supersonic, it's not as big a deal. Or rather, not a big deal at all. Not even a deal. Not even a small deal. Also, those can be kind of difficult, but again, supersonic, so... Like, for instance, there, I would have had to, like, double back to avoid the things, and, yeah. Much more fun to just jump right into them, because I can't be hurt. And just because we didn't have enough hazards, let's get some lava in there as well. You know, it's zones like this that actually make me pretty happy that I didn't wait till the very end to get supersonic. <laughs> I messed that up. Now we gotta wait. Ah, 
so much waiting. Get a haircut from the spikes there. You can just see, though, right? All the times that I would have to go so much slower to not get hit if I was not playing as Super Sonic. Sorry, Tails. I feel like I'm saying that a lot. Yeah, like right there, I would have gotten hit by those spikes. Not cool. Not cool at all. And it's really only this level. There aren't a lot of levels where you get hit in, like, cheesy ways. Or at least, in my opinion, cheesy ways. Of course, we are not done with Metropolis Zone yet. Close one there. See, I get that you're like not just holding to the right, but the fact that you have to like slow down and take your time in a Sonic game, I don't know. Basically, if you can't tell, I, th I think this is one of the weaker stages. Not in terms of uh, sound and graphic design, but just in terms of gameplay. It's always hard in a Sonic game, you know, you gotta strike that balance between just hold to the right to automatically win, and having like actual difficulty, but also making it fun. And yeah, we definitely see a big difficulty spike in the direction of, yeah, that wasn't that fun on uh, this particular stage. Like, oh man, I remember this part when I was younger. Look at this, I'm even having trouble with it right now. But it's all good. Still absolutely fantastic. Oh, Tails, you can't keep up, huh? Sorry, pal. You know, I would like to get to the boss with, uh, that, with a couple rings left. That would be nice. Yeah, that should leave me enough time to kill him. Oh yeah, easily. Also one of the more difficult bosses here. At least getting that initial hit on him. So yeah, that, in my opinion, is probably the weakest part of the game. Not that it's bad, it's still great, but just comparatively. Now we get some cool stuff. This was always one of my favorites as a youngin. It's funny because really we're basically like flying after a giant warship and having all these enemies try and shoot us down. But it's got this, like, super just peaceful 
lovely music. Tails, stop. That's just like, yeah, nice and relaxing. Now, it's worth noting that it's difficult to fall off, but it certainly is possible. <laughs> so, uh, I would avoid trying anything too incredibly crazy. And basically this one is all about seeing how many bounces you can get in a row. What combos you can get. I always found this really cool. We get a little preview of the uh, upcoming stage. And it's actually like a one-for-one one preview, which is pretty cool. It is weird, I, I must say, to have an auto-scroller in a Sonic game, but it's a nice little break. Adds a little bit of variety. It's like Sonic 1 on the Game Gear when we had that auto-scroller stage. I was like, what is this? Alright. As not Flight of the Valkyries plays in the background. I gotta say, it, it's really cool. It has, like, a nice impact to it when you go through, like, alright, it's two acts, and it's two acts, and then all of a sudden it's one. Like, it, it sounds like a silly thing to say, but it, it adds, like, oh, we're getting near the end now, definitely. Can I just get up, please? Thank you. It's like you can tell, like, oh, we're getting close to the final battle. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. There you are. Now you ask yourself, are those things just floating in the air? Because obviously we're flying, right? So are those things floating with the Winged Fortress? Are they being pulled by some sort of gravitational field? Is this a stupid question to be asking? Alright, this tends to be fairly difficult if you're not supersonic. Because, of course, these little things will hurt you with their spikes. But if you are supersonic, it's that simple. Let's do it. I also always found it pretty cool how effectively the Sonic games with like no dialogue could portray a story. Like, yeah, it's not Shakespeare or anything, but we get the point and it's like, oh, Tails is here, yes, you know? Again, might just be me. And I guess canonically, Super Sonic can survive in space, but. You know, it, it would have been very sad if, like, he grabbed on and then came up and suffocated. Might be overthinking it. Alright. And welcome to the final zone. The zone where Supersonic is not going to help me, because you get zero rings. Boom. I always love finishing it like that. And then we get the crazy reveal that Eggman is actually just as fast as Sonic. 
Pretty insane. Bet you didn't know that uh, deepest lore. And, uh, man, I gotta say, this boss when I was younger... So crazy. Obviously those hands will hurt you if you touch them. And we're just gonna play this safe, I think. Now is this the most... This is probably like the second most reused Sonic boss. The first being the Sonic 1 Green Hill Zone boss. But uh, that's about all she wrote. It is actually still relatively difficult for me, even to this day. Well, everybody, that was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, or the Genesis, or Mega Drive, depending on what part of the world you're from. You get this nice little cutscene at the end. I always enjoyed this song. And I always enjoyed the way that the song, like, kind of went with the cutscene. Like, it starts off kind of melancholy. And then Tails is flying away to see if he can find you. Then it gets all hopeful as you're falling back down. Yeah, that's good design right there. And then Sonic's like, I didn't even need you, I can fly now. Anyways, everybody, we're going to call it there. I will leave you with the credits, as I usually do. I hope you enjoyed this little playthrough through Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Next week, I will be uploading the full long play version, so all the way through, no commentary. And, uh, yeah. That's about it. Like I said, I'm planning to get through all of these, so uh, if you have any suggestion for which one I should do next, feel free to let me know. And uh, feel free to check out the channel for more Sonic games, and even not Sonic games. That's about all I have to say. Hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one.